seem that is a part of this theory of power to be racist, to be xenophobic, to blame the ills of society on a single group in the interest of attaining absolute power. Absolutely. And it provided Hitler with an easy way to blame the many ills of Germany in 1924, Weimar Germany after World War I, on one group, which was Jewish people as well as some others, but it was mainly Jews. And for Donald Trump as a former president and possible future president to use that language, knowing that that language led to the Holocaust, he knows what he's doing and he thinks it works. The question, of course, Michael, is how we got here, how we got to the point where someone like Donald Trump could say the things that he says, that members of his own party who are in power do not strongly condemn it, that the people who are running against him for president very much stand by and allow it to happen, and that there is a significant subset of Americans who support it themselves, who would act, for whom it is actually motivating. Yes, that's exactly right. And obviously, the people who advise him say that this is going to create intense support among the, I'm sure they are saying, many racist Americans that are out there and can have influence beyond their numbers. And if you looked at the way that Nikki Haley, just to take one example, replied to that question about this language, she said nothing. And that's the way this spreads. In American history, the know-nothings know in the mid 19th century, the Ku Klux Klan, at its height in the 1920s. American Nazis used to mark a, a march around Jewish synagogues in the 1960s, but these were not candidates for president. You know, Donald Trump, that's one thing. But if Republican leaders, and especially evangelical leaders in Iowa who were planning to go to these caucuses, do not call this out and say, it's un-American, it can lead to brutality of a kind that we don't even want to imagine, then our country is changing in important ways. We better think very seriously about what those ways are. Michael, I've got about 30 seconds left, but you recently compared Trump's assertion that he is not an insurrectionist with President Nixon's assertion in 1973 that he was not a crook. How'd that work out for him? Well, Nixon, as it turns out, was a crook. And oftentimes in political history, and, and I know you know this too, if someone is denying something that they've been accused of, oftentimes it turns out to be the case. This was someone who waged the only insurrection against the Constitution and government of the United States of any president in our history. We have to deal with them as such and let the chips fall where they may.